G'day guys, uh, recently we had a question on the forums about um, 308 rifles and in particular barrel lengths. So um, what I wanted to do was actually have a talk about um, the 308 Winchester of course and, and this, these issues. But um, what I really wanted to do was go over all the aspects that make up a 308 rifle. Now in this case what we're talking about is a, a bit of an all around hack. So it's a rifle that you would use for, you might use it for culling, it might be your zombie apocalypse rifle. Um, you would use it for general stalking, but you might uh, use it for light competition work or just uh, a lot of plinking. So it's a high volume rifle, but it's something that you want to have that's quite robust. So it's not going to be um, a welterweight, but because you're going to, you might want to be carrying it places, it may not um, be a heavyweight. So it's, it's just something that's sort of in between that area. Now this particular rifle, this is my own hack. You can see it's just a straight 700. Um, so what I wanted to do here was just go over the aspects of this particular rifle. Now a lot of you will have, will have read about this in the book series. Um, so with this particular rifle, we live in a rural area. Um, so this is my hunting rifle. It's a rifle I use for training clients. But if there's a sick animal in the area, a horse or something like that, cattle beast, this is the rifle that I'll normally take to, to dispatch that animal. So as you can see, it's, it's doing a lot of work, it's expected to go a lot of places, it's, it's got to be there all the time. Alright, so this particular rifle, it weighs 11 pound. So what actually makes up that weight? Well on the top here we have this uh, Cytron uh, 4-20 to S-TAC scope. Uh, I think from memory this uh, scope weighs 1.5 pound. So with these uh, long range optics, what you're going to find with the 30mm uh, tubes is that the weight's always going to be between 1.3 and 1.5 pound, somewhere around there. So from that uh, 11 pound, that makes up a part of that weight. Now if you desperately wanted to get the weight right down, well realistically the only way you're going to be able to do that is to get into something like a, a Leopold, uh, one of the um, one of their 25mm or 1 inch tube models. And uh, let's say if we were talking about a, a really basic scope like the Freedom model, with that's a, a 3 to 9 by 40 or, or 4 to 12 by 40 and let's say we were to put an um, aftermarket dial on the top and or use the, the reticle, the Tri MOA reticle well that particular unit is going to weigh between um, 0.75 and 0.8 of a pound so you are going to shave quite a bit of weight off the rifle if you really needed to by doing that so just keep that in mind once you get up to these bigger optics even um, 3.5 to 10 by 44, something like that, you're still going to be in that 1.3 pound mark. So to get right down, you've got to go to these, uh, these other types of optics. All right, so re with regards to the stock, um, this is a uh, just a stock standard Bell & Carlson stock. Uh, it's fashioned after the old style Sendero. Um, HS Precision, they also make a, a similar type of stock where it has the aluminium chassis on the inside and then you have this uh, fiberglass outer. Now generally speaking, um, these stocks weigh about 2.8 pound. So if you wanted to shed some weight from your rifle, you could actually do that by going to carbon fibre. Now I think the trick here really is to, if you want to go to carbon fibre but you still want to have um, a good rifle for prone shooting, uh, then look to shedding the weight but not the mass, that's the key. Too often um, gun stock designers and also hunters, shooters in general, they, they think that the way to cut down on the, um, the overall weight is to cut down on the mass. That's not actually so using modern technologies. Okay, so we, if we look here, we have a uh, stock made by Clive Judd. Um, so it's basically a carbon fiber stock. Uh, it's got a very uh, strong area through here, reinforced area. So it has the strength that's required. It doesn't need that um, aluminium in that area. Um, but the stock only weighs about two pound. This stock, I think you, you can get all the way down to about one and a half pound, even lighter if he wants to. So you're already seeing a significant weight savings with this style of stock, but the mass hasn't been reduced. And so not only that, but the fore end through here is actually uh, longer so that it can be laid over a pack and uh, the barrel's not going to be touching the pack. So there's no interference from whatever aid you're using. You can have a bipod out here if you want to and that can stay well away from the hand. Unless you're one of those idiots who likes to shoot that way around, well that's your business. But uh, anyway, with this type of stock, um, you can get the weight down um, between one and two pounds actually. So yeah, that's something to consider as well. 
So if we look at the, uh, the magazine of this particular rifle, um, this is actually just a floor plate. It's just a, um, a guppy style floor plate. Uh, I think this is uh, the brand is Magazine Extender. So it's just a piece of plastic, very simple, and it just allows me to have seven shots in here. Others will have a detachable magazine. But just keep in mind, the more of that stuff you start adding, the more weight you put onto your rifle. So, you know, that's entirely up to you. We could just have a, a clean floor plate and keep it at uh, four or five shots. Now as for the uh, barrel, uh, this is on its fourth barrel now I think, so we do a lot of shooting with this rifle. Um, so the barrel length is 22 inches, uh, the, the muzzle diameter is 0.8, right on 0.8, and the twist rate is 111. So uh, the other thing I want you to pay attention to is the knocks. So we have this um, long parallel in here, just to give that plenty of support at, at the base. It's like a tree with a strong trunk and, and strong roots. So um, that does actually affect the overall weight of the rifle. And again, remember this is a, an 11 pound rifle. So if we were to compare this um, to the likes of a Sendero or something like that, well actually the all up weight for a Sendero uh, in a long action is generally about uh, 11 and a half pounds so realistically I'm only a half pound below this. Uh, that's for the the Sendero all up with, uh, with long range optics. Um, but as you uh, bring the rifle length you make it shorter it actually subjectively it feels differently so the closer you come to 20 inches the easier the rifle feels to, to handle. Now all right so if we take a look at some of the numbers for this um, with the SPS barrel, um, that's the, the sporting barrel, the fine barrel for the, uh, for the Remingtons. Um, the muzzle diameter is about 0.665, um, through to about 0.675. And the weight of those barrels is generally about 2.25 uh, pound. That's just the weight of the barrel on its own. Now the uh, Sendero barrel, that's a 26 inch barrel, so the, the SPS is a 24 and the Sendero is normally a, a 26. The, um, the muzzle diameter for those is 0.825 and the barrels weigh around about 4 pounds. Now as for uh, docking your barrel, if you want to play it safe, um, what you can generally do, not taking this meteor end of the barrel into account, but up through here, what you would generally budget on would be about um, 50 grams per inch of barrel uh, removed or roughly 0.1 of a pound, something like that. That, that just keeps you nice and safe. Alright, so if we just um, have a, a think about the contours uh, for these barrels, um, as we see here this is a, a 0.8 muzzle and the weight for the entire rifle is uh, 11 pound. Now if you were to drop the um, muzzle contour, uh, the muzzle diameter that is, at uh, 22 inches down to about 750 of an inch, then you'd lose around about a pound. And then if you were to drop that contour again down to the actual SPS contour, which is about uh, 0 0.665, 0 0.675 of an inch, you'll come down almost another pound. So just to play that safe, um, you might want to budget on about 0.8 of a pound uh, going from uh, 0.825 or 0.8 down to 0.750 and then another 0.8 of a pound going from uh, 0.750 down to the lightest contour. That just um, also helps to, keep, uh, to take into consideration your actual barrel length whether that is um, 20 or 22 inches that just just takes care of those averages. So just sort of play with those figures. So so far we've got a scope here which is a uh, uh, 1.5 pounds, so we've got that to, to take into consideration, but we could shed some weight um, We could shed Well, not quite a pound, but three quarters of a pound by moving to a, a very a lightweight scope We've got a stock we could shed um, a pound off of that with a, a carbon fiber stock and we've got a, a relatively heavy barrel, but we could shed a, um, about 0.8 and up to a pound by going down to that um, 0.750 of an inch barrel contour. So there's, there's ways and means to actually get that weight down. But um, for your all around hack, what you really want to aim for is something that um, that balances well and doesn't heat up too much. And if, you're, if you've are if you been on the move quite a bit yourself and, you, and your heart rate's up a bit and you need to actually shoot accurately over a long distance, 
um, then you need a bit of weight in that rifle. Just keep in mind that there is a bit of a, a bent here towards um, long range. That's what we're doing with this particular rifle. Alright, so when it comes to the actual barrel length, um, I think 20 inches is a great length for the 308. But um, if, you, if you want to actually have another bite at that barrel uh, later on after, after the throat's worn out, then you might want to start at 22 inches and then after the throat's worn out, dock it back, rechamber it. But you will need to have a bit of um, contour in this area here, a bit of a parallel so that you've got something to work with and then you can ream forwards. But what I want you to keep in mind is that um, sometimes you can really work hard in that area. The steel gets very difficult to cut after that. So you may need to start out with a, a brand new reamer and a good reamer for that would be the uh, Manson M852 match reamer. So um, that's got uh, good dimensions in which you can, you can still use factory ammunition. It's, it's a no neck turn um, reamer so you don't have to do any neck turning but uh, it will give you that um, match like performance. But anyway, um, coming back to that 22 inch mark, uh, sorry the 20 inch mark, um, that's a, just a really nice um, nice way to handle a rifle at that weight. You can, even at 11 pound, the rifle does feel compact. It feels easy to carry. Uh, so the weight is definitely subjective. Uh, if you give someone a, a 26 inch 11 pound rifle and you give them a 20 inch 11 pound rifle, they'll always tell you that the 11 pound rifle is lighter. It's just the way it is. Um, so regarding velocities, Generally speaking, with a 20 inch barrel, uh, the 168 grain bullet will go uh, around about uh, 26, uh, 75 feet per second. So, um, as you cut back um, shorter than that, what you really want to budget on is about uh, 20 feet per second per inch for the, for the first two inches, so down to 18, down to an 18 inch barrel. Then from 18 back, you want to budget on about a 25 feet uh, per second back to that 16 inch mark. Now forwards from 20 inches, what you would budget on is about uh, 15 feet per second. So in other words, if we had a 20 inch barrel 308 and the average velocity for that was 26, um, 70 to 75 feet per second with a 168 grain bullet, if we were to add uh, two inches onto that, uh, realistically you'd be looking at about 30 feet per second so you'd go from say 26, 70 feet per second up to 2700, which is exactly what this uh, particular barrel does. So this, um, the, the first barrels that were on this rifle were 20 inch barrels, and then I moved to a, a 22 inch, and all the first barrels, they all gave 26, 70 feet per second, and this gave uh, 2700, and that, that does seem to be the norm. So just that's the kind of velocity that you're going to be working with at that length. Now, um, I had another reader just recently, he wanted to, well, he'd already done it, he'd cut the barrel down quite short, he'd put a suppressor on it, and the idea for this rifle was that um, it was a father-son rifle, but his son's still very, very young. He needed to keep the boy in nice and close to him where, where he's safe, so he wanted to cut that uh, noise right down. So he cut the barrel um, right back to uh, 16 inches. And then he was using 130 grain bullets and trying to drive them fast to, to make up for that lost speed. Um, he also he was using 150 grain bullets to try and um, get a bit of speed but a bit more punch. In both cases, um, the rifle just wasn't delivering. It wasn't really giving him the, that knockdown or that punch that was required. It was, the wounding was, was not there out past 100 yards. So in this case, what I want you to do is get into the the mindset, um, a lot of you have already got experience with the old uh, 303 British, um, also uh, older shooters in the US, they'll have experience with the uh, 3006. Now a lot of that, um, a lot of the older ammo was quite slow. So um, in the case of the 308, you could run the 168 grain, again nice soft bullet, but if you're running that between 24 and 2500 feet per second, let's say you've got a very slow barrel, um, as long as you're running a soft bullet, it's going to be quite a cruise missile, it's still going to hit hard and as long as it can open up and really uh, it can shed a bit of weight but it can still actually um, still power through, it's got that momentum there. So the, the low impact velocity that actually helps with that wounding, um, it's, the bullet's not breaking up so fast that you would call it bullet blow up. Um, you still, uh, often you'll, you'll have a mushroom projectile at the end of it that maintains quite a bit of weight. 
So in this case I'm talking about the likes of the 168 grain uh, Hornady ELDM, not the ELDX. So with the very soft ELDM or the uh, Sierra TMK, you can actually um, you can achieve deep penetration even though that bullet's shedding a lot of weight. But in the absence of um, a lot of hydraulic force, you're gaining mechanical wounding or mechanical force, so you're actually getting quite a good wound track through the animal. And so he's got a good rifle as a, as a father and son rig. And of course, the, the reason why he cut it down was because it was a, a the suppressor was going to actually add more length to it. So anyway, those are some of the uh, basic considerations for the 308 rifle. Um, I mean, it's up to you. It's a personal thing. I, I've put together rifles for clients um, where we've used the Sendero style stock and the SPS barrel and long range optics. So um, you've got the mass in the stock, so you've got something good to hold on to. You've got the lightweight barrel, uh, so that's it does keep the, the weight of the overall rifle down. Um, and it's a good accurate rifle, but you're not going to be taking more than three shots at a time before it starts to open up. Now that particular barrel on that rifle, it, it does show a tendency to wander with heat because it's just the limitations of that mass produced barrel. Now, Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about is the actual uh, twist rate for this rifle. Um, this is a, a 1 in 11 twist. And uh, I put um, all weights of uh, projectile through this barrel. Uh, so you'll hear people say that uh, 11 twist isn't going to stabilize 200 grain bullets. Well, that's actually a load of nonsense. Uh, in this rifle, I'll shoot everything up to the uh, 225 grain ELDM. Further to that, um, what I have found just, and just this is statistically speaking, over the last so many months, and uh, actually the last couple of years, of the rifles that I've been shooting, just on average the 11 twist rifles have been the most accurate with uh, all bullet weights up to 208 grains and then including up to 225 grains. Now that doesn't mean to say that it's the ideal twist rate. What I'm trying to say here is that just of the rifles that I've been mucking around with over the last couple of years, those were all very good barrels. They all so if you want to run that, um, that middle uh, twist rate for the 308, go for it. In fact, if you want to run a 3006 with the 208 grain ELDM um, and you'd also like to be able to run lighter bullets, well then there's nothing to stop you from running the 11 twist in that as well. One of the main advantages of the, the slower twists is that they don't really um, put too much strain on the jackets of, um, of, of thin jacketed projectiles. So that's just something to keep in mind. But otherwise, um, in the past this had uh, 1 in 12 twist barrels on it. And they were fine, I would shoot up to 200 grains and, and he heavier as well with great accuracy. I didn't really care. The thing is, if, as you're getting up into the heavier bullet weights especially, if you're loading to actually use those um, at woods ranges, you don't need to have this um, you know, thumb hole groups and you're not worried about stability uh, through the transonic barrier. That's absolute nonsense. You just need the bullet stable enough when it arrives on target that's going to penetrate well, it's not going to uh, tumble, um, you know, and do something out of the ordinary. So you're just wanting it to, to behave as it normally would. So there's just no need to have um, excessive twist rates for that. So if you want to go with a 12 twist, that's fine. 11 twist, that's really uh, quite a, a good one to experiment with. If you prefer 10, that's fine too. And the same goes there with the um, 3006. If you prefer a 10 for that, then do it. It doesn't really matter either way. So don't get too hung up on that. But um, with the uh, the five group or five R barrels and eleven twist, they do um, they do put uh, less strain on the on the projectiles than some of these faster twist barrels that are coming out. And do be mindful of the likes of the one and nine twists that are, that have been coming out. Um, that's a different kettle of fish again. That's more for your um, 300 magnums that are firing the, the longer bullets now, like the 230 grain A tip and the 225 grain ELDM. But there's longer ones still, like the uh, 240 grain Sierra Match King bullet. That's an extremely long projectile and it, it may work better with that 9 twist.